Hello everybody on YouTube. Today we're going to reinstall this laptop. There's several different ways of reinstalling laptop, but today I will be doing a wipe and load installation. This is where you back up your data, which I'm doing now. You back up your drivers or download new or updated drivers. You create or buy an installation disk of Windows and then you reinstall. So at the moment I am backing up the data to my machine in the background here. The data is copying from my laptop to the desktop PC over Ethernet connection. And there is the Ethernet connection. So that's going at gigabit speed to the machine. And as soon as that is done we do a reinstall. When it comes to computers, being laptop or desktop, People do get scared, they don't want to reinstall, they don't want to do things themselves. But I'm going to show you that it's really not that hard just to reinstall from a fresh installation of Windows. So my backup is done, I've copied all of my data rather to my desktop PC in the background. The folder on the desktop, that's the folder I've copied over, all of my data that I want to keep is stored in data on that machine over there, you can see it in the background. Okay next thing you want to do is take note of your product key. So if you're using a volume license, it's not such a problem. If you're using a single, a single user license, so per machine, which all machines come with, there'll be a certificate of authentication which is placed on the bottom of the machine. So take a note of the key, which I will not show you, but it is on the bottom, I guarantee, over there. Take a note of that and insert your installation media. In my instance, I'll be using a data stick to reinstall as I copy the installation media files from the disk onto that actual heart, uh, data stick. Sorry, There it is, you can see it's all copied there, along with my NVIDIA graphics driver, the key, and Office 2010. Now ignore that because you already have Office on a disk, of course. Luckily, Windows 8 already includes many drivers for a lot of different hardware, graphical adapters, along with sound and networking. So let's go ahead and reboot. I've inserted my data stick. The machine will now reboot. All computers boot up in a certain order. They use a boot record to know where to start. The BIOS also lists devices it can boot from. So in my case, I'll be hitting the F12 key, I believe, to bring up my boot menu options. Yep, press F12 to select boot device. You may have seen it flash up there. And there you can see there's there's uh, the standard hard drive it boots from, the DVD drive, the network boot for Pixie booting. You've got your hard drive, and because my data stick can emulate a CD-ROM, it brings up two. Don't worry about that. Use the, in your case, if you're using a DVD, it's like the DVD drive of your machine. If not, use the USB hard drive. Okay. Your machine will now boot into the pre-execution environment built into the data stick or into the image. Okay, select your language. Apologies for the shakes. It's quite hard to hold an iPad, believe it or not. And tell it to install. So the next stage, the last four. Here we go. Starting setup. Okay, so you can accept the terms and agreements, the EULA, and here you can either upgrade your Windows installation, say you had a Windows 7 on here, you could either upgrade to 8, simple as that, or you can just do a custom installation, which is what we're interested in, we want to go to here, and we want to use this hard drive, so delete the installation that's there, so it partitions it so it understands where Windows is, so delete that, delete your reserve partition, which is where the system restore files are kept in case your machine can't boot up. That's why sometimes you may have seen in the past your machine will boot up and it will say starting system repair or start up repair. So let's create a new partition on there. Apologies for the shakes guys. Alright, don't hate me for this. All right, okay. Okay, there we go. It's recreated the two partitions again, the reserved and the partition space for Windows to sit on. So click next. And really now it's a waiting game. You wait sort of, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, depending on which media you're using. If you're using a data stick or a external hard drive, it's going to take you considerably less time than a, a DVD media. 
So I would say probably five to ten minutes by data stick, and you'll see it flashing away there. You know, as it does, flashes away. And um, on, a, on a disc, probably 15 to 20 minutes, I should think, a little bit longer. This is an Intel i5 processor in this laptop, and it comes with uh, 6 gig of RAM, but I've upgraded it to 8, and it comes with a GeForce GT 540M graphics card with a gig of RAM, but I think you can use all of the RAM that's, that's free, really, it's adaptive memory, and I've upgraded it to a Samsung 840 Professional 512 meg SSD, so it's pretty cool, oh yeah, it's getting there, slowly. There we go. So what the Windows installation is actually doing here is it's copying the Windows install files from the data stick to the hard drive ready to unpack next when it reboots. So you'll see the hard drive will be flickering away. Probably, yeah, there you go. You see it flickering now and then. It, that's all because the data stick speed over USB is slow. That's what takes so long. It'll be using the install.wim next. Okay, we're almost there. Really simple so far, hey? Okay, machine and I'll reboot. I'll just click enter on the keyboard when it asks to. Makes it a little bit quicker to uh, reboot. Do 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 do. There we go. Reboot now, please. Oh, ho, ho. This time we don't want to tell it to boot from anywhere else because it'll boot from the hard drive, which is the next in line to boot from anyway. Very first device. Okay, and Windows now start up. So it's now using the installation files that have been copied from the data stick onto the machine. That's the benefit of having a solid state drive, guys. <laughs> the speed is nice and quick because now there's no information traveling between the USB stick and the laptop. It's all the internal components. So the power of the processor, the power of the RAM, the capacity of the RAM, and the read-write speed of the hard drive. The read-write speed of these hard drives is something like 520 megabytes per second, I think, megabits per second, rather. So it's pretty quick. Do, 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 do. Okay, reboots again. Not many machines do it as quick as that, I'll tell you that for nothing. next stage is the customization stage. It asks for a computer name, a product key, various other information like that. You can use either a local account or a Microsoft account. In this video I'll use a Microsoft account I think. A computer name and I've selected my colour that I prefer. If you're on a laptop or a desktop PC with a wireless network card, the next stage it'll ask you to join a Wi-Fi connection if you wish. I'll skip this because I'm connected by gigabit ethernet anyway so it's not really much point in joining the wi-fi you can customize the installation or you can just go for the express settings for now i'll click express simply because it's just quicker and easier and this is where you sign into a microsoft account if you've already got a microsoft account so an outlook account a business account anything like that link to microsoft just use it now i can use my mcp um, email address so i can go in there hang on a sec then go ahead and check for an account and ask you to put your password in Okay, it accepts my account. Bearing in mind guys, it's the same process for any operating system. I mean, anything after sort of XP, I mean, Vista was pretty much the same as that. Uh, 7 was very similar to that. And 8 is not much different to that either. It's all the same pre-execution environment really. It's all the same operating system really. <laughs> So it's just telling you how to do things because it's all new in Windows 8. I should upgrade to 8.1. I will do that, but um, I think there's a few issues I need to iron out first. Again. <laughs> no surprises there. <laughs> so yeah, it'll, it'll take a, about two minutes to do this. It does on my system anyway. I think they're trying to get us into a disco mood, party mood, with all these different colours that are strobing up. And... Um, yeah, there's a, there's a slight issue with the base install of Windows 8. Um, I forgot to mention this earlier. Sometimes on some hardware, I mean, I've, I've in, installed Windows 8 on quite a few different machines simply because I, that's my my job, the nature of my job, I do that. Um, 
it doesn't always work. Windows 8 sometimes blue screens on the first boot up. So although it says installing apps and it's working fine, sometimes it reboots and crashes out and the second time it's fine. I, I don't know why, I think it's, it needs a, an update and it also does it when you're trying to run, run Windows Update as well. So <laughs> we'll see if it does it. I hope not, but we'll see. <laughs> Here we go. We're almost there, guys. It should take us to the tile system now, yeah, the, the the start, the new start menu. So that that is it. I mean, you've literally reinstalled a laptop or desktop by doing those stages, those processes there. Um, the next stage to that would be to activate Windows and then reinstall your drivers and then reinstall Office and then activate Office. After that, you can do whatever you want with it. Transfer your data back. Um, I mean, Microsoft, you can do that anyway. If you've, if you've logged in on the Microsoft account, you may have noticed it's picked up a picture of me when I was like 14. Um, in the middle of the screen there, looking like a really punk, and uh, I think I was in Turkey actually. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it'll back up your data anyway. So if you if you do that, you can use a, a SkyDrive account as well. Um, you can see SkyDrive there, uh, things like that. So let's go ahead and, and carry on with the installation anyway. So let's activate Windows, and you can do this by I think I believe there's three methods you can do. You can either do it by command line, or you can do it by the interface, or you can um, type in from the run command box. So start. Hold on the start key. Hit run R. Brings it the run the run command here, and you can type in slui .exe, um, which brings up the um, activation box. And also, um, because the key isn't installed, it, it generates a, a, a basic key just to use for thirty days, like a trial. That won't activate. But what you can do is if you do the same process again, so start run. Type in slui.exe3, which is a different version of that. It means change your key. So you can type in your product key here and then activate it. A copy of Windows will then activate. Thanks, you're all done. Uh, as simple as that. I've just got my laptop then to connect to my home group. So it's sharing from the other machine in the background here. And then we can transfer my data back can then see whatever's on the desktop of my machine in the background here and I can connect to the data drive again I can copy all of my stuff over so let's drag that out of the way let's drag the data folder to the desktop this is where I store it should take like no time at all okay okay what else do we have on here that I want to copy over do, 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 Let's take a copy of the Windows 8 image so I can make virtual machines through Hyper-V. Okay, that's all I need for now. And it, it really is as simple as that, guys. I mean, unless you need to install other software as well, I mean, that's it. I mean, you, you also need to install your drivers, remember. Some laptops and desktops won't have some drivers installed already for you on Windows 8. Um, in my case, I have a third-party graphics card in this thing. It's an NVIDIA driver it needs. So you'd, I, I copied that from the machine anyway, or from the website. doesn't matter. Get the driver that you need. Copy it to your desktop, or whatever you're copying it to. So it's coming off my data stick now. It has already installed a graphical driver, a base driver, but um, this is more up to date. It's literally come out about a week ago, so there we go. Just run it, install it, and then that'll be the end of it. Okay, that's my graphics card installed. I've disabled USC because I can't stand the stuff. And then the last thing you do, really, ultimately, is do Windows Update. So you go to the Charms menu, click Settings, and Control Panel. And then you go to your system security and then Windows Update. Check for updates, select the ones you want when they appear in the list, and that is it. After that, the machine's done. If you have any questions, guys, drop me an email um, or private message me on uh, YouTube, it's no problem. I'll give you a hand if I can. My name is Jake Billing, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you later. See you later, bye.